Hey folks, still here at NGConf. We're talking to Deborah Carada. Hi. You want to say hi? Hi. Uh, do you want to just give a brief introduction, let people know who you are? Yeah, my name is Deborah Carata, and I am a consultant. I'm a Pluralsight author. I speak at conferences, and I love doing Angular. Very cool. I'm also trying to help people get to know the speakers a little bit more. So, I mean, do you have any hobbies or, you know, where do you live? Who, who do you work for generally? You said you're a consultant, but I don't know if you're a consultant for a company. Uh, I have my own company. I have had my own company since the 80s, so it's been a long time. Um, uh, one of my hobbies is video games. Embarrassingly, nice. my some of my favorite video games are those Lego ones. Have you ever played those Lego uh -huh. ones, like my Lego Star Wars? Yep. My wife and my son play that sometimes. He's homeschooled, so yeah. Yeah. We're taking a break. We're playing Lego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got hooked on it when I played with my kids and... Now, embarrassingly, I still, <laughs> still play it. Nice. And I think you said when you came in that you'd been hiking? Yes. Um, my husband and I came up early and went to Moab and oh, went sweet. to Arches National Park. And we walked 10 miles yesterday and nine miles the day before. Nice. Hiking on rocks and dirt. And it was great fun. So... You're in great shape, so you're not sore at all today, right? Oh, my shins hurt like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, incidentally, yeah, the kind of the iconic arch that everybody sees for Utah is Delicate Arch. Did you go out and see that? We did, and I think that's why my um, uh, my legs hurt because I I think it's from the downhill going uh -huh. down on large, yep. large quantities of rocks. Um, I think I got shin splints from the downward track. Yep, it's that hard makes on sense. Your legs. It it is. It was um, easier going up, I think, than going down. Yeah, when I was a kid, my dad ran the St. George Marathon, which is southern Utah as well, and uh, he spent a whole bunch of time practicing going uphill because he knew that there were hills. He just figured the downhill would be fine, and it killed him going back down the hills. So That's yeah, fine. you don't think about it, but yeah, you're constantly bracing yourself going down. So yep. Well, cool. So your talk is going to be end things you didn't know about the router? That's correct. And uh, yeah, so what don't we know about the router? <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you all my things. Um, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, there are lots of, of features that the router has that uh, if you're just using the router for your basic routing, you might not have stumbled upon. Right. And so we're going to cover some of those, like how do you deal with um, some cases when you want a menu on your screen and other mm. cases you don't. How do you set up the router so that you can do stuff like that? How do you uh, do lazy loading? So we're going to include that. Um, how do you use uh, guards, especially um, uh, to protect not only access to a route, but also protecting leaving a route, like after mm -hmm. an edit, helping the user um, not accidentally lose all their changes right. by navigating away accidentally. Um, so we're going to be talking about that and, and a whole bunch of other things. I named it end things because of my list of things. I don't know how many, any mm -hmm. one person, any one particular person might not know. Um, so hopefully everyone will have at least one thing, um, yep. that they didn't know about the router, um, and so uh, it was kind of a, a fun talk. I um, do a similar talk that's an hour and 15. So I had to cut out a lot to get it into 20. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. So, um, uh, so there are some, some things, of course, that I, I won't be able to cover. But I did. I picked the gems. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I mean, even the things that you said are going to be in your talk, I'm sitting there going, you're going to do all that in 20 minutes? Yeah. We, um, it's kind of fast paced, but I've. I've uh, rehearsed it numerous times, and it, it fits into like 20 minutes and 30 seconds or something mm -hmm. like that. So. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of a talk that a friend of mine gave at some of the Ruby conferences, and it was 10 things you didn't know Rails or Ruby could do. And uh, yeah, he'd get through like 105 things in 30 minutes, oh, right? Wow. And it's just, yeah, moving right along through it. So yeah. Yeah, in 20 minutes, you don't have time to really stop and do a demo, so that cuts out a huge amount of time, which is one of the things mm -hmm. I can do in the hour and 15 version. Um, so that kind of helps you. Um, plus, it, it I think it keeps the pace and energy of the audience up to kind mm -hmm. of um, go through things uh, clearly, but well 
pacedly. Is that a word? <laughs> well, I well guess, paced. Yeah. Um, so that uh, we can, um, you know, hit the high points and and walk away with with learning something, mm-hmm. which is part of the reason people come to this is to go back. Uh, home with some additional ideas, some additional thoughts of how they could approach a problem and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the, the biggest one that I had to cut out that I was sad about is I show how to do uh, tabbing, like tabbed uh-huh. edit pages or tabbed view, view pages with oh, the yeah. router. And that didn't fit into 20 minutes. So that's the saddest one that had to go. I held on to it as long as I could, but it had oh, to go. friends. <laughs> We're all sad. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Do, do you have any just tips for that kind of a thing that you could throw in here? Or? Um, well, it all has to do with hierarchical router outlets. Okay. Um, and I do cover those um, in the menu part, so it's kind of an extension of that, which is okay. why I felt it okay to leave because you can just kind of extend what we talk about with the, with the how to have some pages with menus mm-hmm. and some without. Okay, friends. Never mind. Not so sad you just have an exercise to do after you watch your talk tomorrow that's right uh, additional work left for the learner that's right there you go um your talk is tomorrow or not tomorrow thursday Thursday. at 11 a.m yes be Um, there yeah i'm it's tuesday now i'm trying to get these up before the conference because i know there are a lot of people that are going to watch the live stream there are a lot of people who are going to be here at the conference and so yeah then they can kind of get a highlight and they can say hey we're gonna, yeah. Gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see that go talk. Listen, watch or listen. Yeah. Um, anything that people should be doing to prepare for the talk? No, um, I do have one slide on, um, you know, what how the router works, just to mm-hmm. ensure that anyone that's a little bit newer to Angular has all of the keywords recently covered. So I have one slide uh, going through exactly um, how it works to um, set us all up on the same starting point. Then to go through my and things that makes sense yeah um i, also I don't like just, to leave anybody out so. yeah absolutely i just uh i have one item of business i need to take care of kendo ui sponsored the interviews for this um so yeah if you're looking for visual elements you can put in i think my favorite one of theirs is the the table data thing that they have where you can sort and it's kind of like the data tables ui but it looks nicer it's cleaner so yeah if you're if you're looking for visual elements graphs anything like that uh, kendo ui does all that stuff um so go check them out at kendo ui.com now one thing that i i'm kind of curious about is what are you working on these days then i mean your plural site courses you've got your consulting yeah are you doing anything just new or interesting or i am currently just beginning an ngrx course for plural site oh nice i am very excited i'm doing it with duncan hunter and it is going to be um the getting started so it will be um paced such that hopefully someone with just a very introductory knowledge of angular can come up to speed quickly mm-hmm. on how to use ngrx it covers the benefits of ngrx and and exactly how to do it but in a, a more getting started pace Right. Um, I know there's quite a few NGRX talks here, mm-hmm. but it's not a getting started pace in 20 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, um, if NGRX gets you excited after coming to the conference and hearing all the cool things you can do, but the talks were a little um, too quick, hopefully um, Duncan's and my course will be out in a month or so, and mm-hmm. um, we'll be able to uh, um, help. Yeah, it's funny you talk about NGRX, but. Um, I mean, I've interviewed Dan Abramoff, who created the Redux pattern, which is what NGRX uses. Right. I've also had Mike, <coughs> Ryan, we've had Mike Ryan on the show. We've had yeah. um, Jesse Sanders talk a whole bunch about it. Uh, John Papa and Ward Bell are doing a bunch of stuff with NGRX. And, you know, you start looking at how it how the Redux pattern works conceptually. And I remember thinking the first time I had talked through it with somebody, I'm like, oh, I get it. It's just this and this and this. And then I went and tried to do it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. So, so yeah, so that'll be really, really nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do you know when that's going to be out? Uh, we don't. Um, we're, um, we met all day today to kind of scope stuff up, mm-hmm. out, work on the first module. We have all the code uh, roughed out, um, not perfected. Uh, so we haven't started. We haven't finished our scripting or our PowerPoints yet. We haven't started recording. Right. So I would think... 
you know, a month and a half, maybe longer, depending upon how um, much other work both of us have yep. um, come up. Google I.O. is coming up, so that's oh, yes. going to take a whole week, so we got to add that on. Mm -hmm. um, so probably realistically, it's sounding more like two months um, <clears throat> by the time we get it all finished, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be soon. Right. Are you a Google developer expert? On the jacket. <laughs> nice. I'm wearing the Google Developer Expert jacket. Very nice. So you will be at Google I.O. then. It was, it's going to be my first time. I've, it's the first time I've been able to score a ticket. So I'm nice. so excited. Is that easier to score a ticket if you're a GDE? Yes. Don't tell anybody. Th th there's my incentive right there. <laughs> I've been trying to get in for years. and Yeah, it's really hard. I, I even have friends that are like, I might be able to help you. And that hasn't worked. So, yeah. Well, I'll have to try and get in that route. Yeah, that works. So, so what do you do as a Google developer expert? I, um, well, primarily, um, even though I'm considered a web development mm -hmm. GDE, I'm really focused more on Angular. So I yeah. do whatever I can to help um, answer questions that people have about Angular, um, support um, the Angular team in any way that I right. can. Uh, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I'm there where the Angular team is. Mm -hmm. So I come to all of the uh, meetups and provide any assistance that we can with um, assisting with those. Uh, so it's mostly those kinds of things, really providing support, doing a whole lot of Angular talks everywhere. I speak at a lot of Microsoft conferences on mm. Angular, so helping the .NET developers mm -hmm. move into Angular. I do um, uh, ver very focused talks for .NET developers, so using comparisons between right. .NET and Angular, so in .NET it's this, and Angular it's that, and I think that sometimes helps people coming from that space um, recognize that the Angular code is just like C Sharp code mm -hmm. with just a few little um, tweaks. Um, everything's a class, that's how .NET is, so that makes it really um, easy to, uh, not easy, <laughs> it makes it Folks, so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. No, but it does give you a framework, a mental framework to move between one and the uh -huh. other. Awesome. So um, what conference are you speaking at coming up? Um, my next one's VS Live in Austin, Texas. That mm -hmm. should be really fun. Um, then is Google I.O. Then there's another VS Live in Chicago and in mm -hmm. Boston and in Seattle at the Microsoft campus, actually in Bellevue. Um, those are the ones that immediately come to mind that I'm doing very soon. There you go. All right. Well, um, if people want to follow you on Twitter or see what you're working on these days, maybe on GitHub or if you have a blog or things like that, wh where is all that stuff? Uh, my Twitter is at Deborah Carrada. Uh -huh. I got my full name. And my GitHub is just Deborah K. I didn't even have to spell out my whole last name. It was easy. There you go. Yes. Do you, you only have to do half the work, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all of my, I've got quite a few GitHub repos that demonstrate um, all sorts of things. Like mm -hmm. I have a repo that goes with this talk. So if you want to actually see and code all the things that we're talking about, it's um, called Movie Hunters Dash Routing. Nice. And so you can go to that repo in my GitHub and it will have all the code for the talk that I'm giving. I'll also have that on my slides for my talk, so you'll see it there in case you can't find it. All right, cool. Well, uh, folks, again, Thursday, 11 a.m.